so now we brought Julie into one of our exam rooms and, and really this part of the procedure is really uh, just like uh, any sort of a blood draw. So we will uh, demonstrate that now. Are you ready, Julie? I am ready. Very good. Some of the key things from a blood draw standpoint is we really like people to stay hydrated. Um, so make sure you drink a lot of fluids. Uh, but on the day that you would get PRP, it really uh, exposes the veins and allows an easier blood draw. So what we do now is we draw about 20 cc's of, uh, of venous blood, so this is in the vein, it's not in the artery, and it typically is a relatively painless uh, component of the procedure. So after we do the blood draw, now we take the, the, the tube of the blood and we're going to spin it in the centrifuge to formulate our PRP. So now we spun down Julie's blood and now we have the final product. So this is actually the PRP and she had a really good spin. So this is about five and a half cc's. We use a concentration uh, of three times, um, which there's a lot of uh, literature and as far as uh, uh, platelet concentration. So three times seems to be a, a good number. Um, and what, what, what we have is the, the platelets and growth factors and that really is what PRP is all about. Uh, obviously importantly is putting it in the right spot and that's where the ultrasound comes in handy. All PRP injections or stem cell injections that we do in our office are guided uh, um, by ultrasound. So what we do is we'll, we'll have the affected body part and we'll sh I'll show you in a second, but for example with Julie's shoulder, we will be able to identify the area of pathology in her rotator cuff and be able to direct the, the PRP injection exactly in that area of, um, of uh, abnormality in her shoulder. So now what we're doing here is we're identifying and isolating the area of abnormality in her rotator cuff. Now what Julie has is an area of tendinosis which um, uh, there are different types of tendon pathology of the rotator cuff. One is a, a tear, and she does not have a tear, but she has tendinosis where the quality of her tendon uh, is abnormal in, in one area. So that's where we're going to identify that under ultrasound and then put our PRP injection directly in that area to help that tissue heal. So after we've isolated it, and now what we'll do is we will um, prep the area. And we've got her put in a, a position, this is called the modified crass position, actually it's the hand is right there. And what that does is it helps bring the rotator cuff in better view for, for me and a better ability to access the rotator cuff with this injection. So for planning out a uh, PRP injection, typically it's about a, you know, a roughly a 30 minute type situation, whereas you saw with the blood draw and then once we spin it down and once we actually do the, uh, do the injection, it's roughly about 30 minutes total. So now we've cleaned it and next what we will do is we will numb the area. And what I'll do, I'm going to put the, a, a fair amount of the, the PRP injection into the, the rotator cuff. I will needle it as we do that, and then I'm going to put the rest in the subacromial space, which is the area um, a rate adjacent to the rotator cuff, and, and, and Julie has some bursitis or some inflammation in that area, and that will help that.
So with the, the ultrasound, I can actually visualize the needle uh, going in and out of the tendon and sort of in and out of the area uh, that, we, that we need to um, you know, put the medication. And I think the ultrasounds really helped advance the practice of you know, PRP and all the biologics and that as in before ultrasound, you know, we weren't really, I mean, you had an idea where you were putting things, but not exactly. And the ultrasound allows you to be very exacting, you know, with not only PRP shots, but with other shots. Are you doing okay, Julie? Yeah. Are we getting close? We're very close. It's not painless, but I'm not crying. It's a little uncomfortable. All right. Like said. And now we're done. Oh. Well, well done, Julie. Thank you. And then really what we do is we put a Band-Aid and then uh, uh, um, what we like to do after PRP is that um, we like to ice it tonight. And then oftentimes we'll give patients pain medication uh, for the tonight and, and tomorrow in case it gets sore. The thing is with PRP, you cannot use anti-inflammatory. So a lot of people that are using ibuprofen or um, um, naproxen, you can't use those because it deactivates what were the platelets. So uh, Tylenol is okay, but oftentimes patients will have been taking those for a while. So we, we, we like for them to stop that. So we'll give them something else for, for pain uh, in, in the meantime, and then they can switch over to Tylenol. And that's for two weeks. Oftentimes what we'll do as well is couple this with physical therapy. So we'll get physical therapy going. Usually I like to wait about a week or so. Uh, and from a, an activity standpoint, you can still be active, but for example, I wouldn't want Julie to go to the gym and do a, a shoulder workout in, in a couple days. That wouldn't be ideal for PRP. So what we're looking for is a, about a week where you're a little less impactful on the, on the body part, be it the shoulder, the knee, the ankle, or the Achilles tendon, uh, some of the other things that we do PRP on. And uh, however, ultimately, you know, we'll get into physical therapy and the reason we do this is so people can resume uh, their activities of choice and their lifestyle of choice uh, without having to undergo a surgical procedure. And that's really what regenerative medicine is all about, is the ability to tap into the body's uh, ability to heal itself. And if we're able to do that without, a sur you know, without uh, surgery, uh, then uh, I think we're all better off for that.